Hi guys, this is Randy Mellon, where we game together, and this is a Dice Tower review. Ever curious about how to build homes for your tree spirits? Yeah. We'll let you know in Kudama Duo. Okay, so Kodama Duo is a two-player version of the original Kodama. Each player starts with a tree trunk card, which is the base of your home, which is so cute. Your Kodama home. Yes. Um, you are laying branch cards in clever little arrangements to have optimal scoring by the end of the season. You do this during the grow phase, in which there are four grow phases per season, and there mm -hmm. are three seasons in the game. At the end of that grow phase, where you place four cards out by selecting them from a you I cut, you choose mm, I like that. mechanism, you place those four cards out, and then you score one of your uh, Kodama cards. Mm -hmm. And those Kodama cards will give you various scoring depending on how you laid them out. There's all They're all different. You score those. And then after three seasons, you actually have one of those left that you throw away. So you only score three of the four cards that you start off with. So you can kind of lead yourself in a different direction, but you're not married. You're not, you're you're not, not married to, to that. It. Right. So or you married, can, whatever. Well, you know, appropriate. <laughs> I do and like that. You, you can, can kind of switch up your strategy somewhat mm -hmm. during the game. And we will show you a little bit more about it right now. We will do that. So let's take a look at what this game comes with. You have your score tracker. You have a Seasons Tracker, which has a tiny little tree on it, which is so cute. Um, you have your Player Markers. Doot, doot. Those are tiny, aren't they? Um, and they correspond with the Trunk card that you choose to play with at the beginning of the game. Here we have your Branch Cards. You'll be laying these out in various ways for scoring. You have your Kodama Cards, and on each of these is a scoring objective. And as you can see, there's a lot of them, and I really like that. I feel like... The game could potentially already get samey, but because there's so many of these, it really keeps things fresh. Here are your decree cards. You will be choosing one per season to play for the whole game. So that's kind of cool. Um, we have your spirit tiles. And then uh, here we have the split markers. The game does say, and this is very important, listen up, whoever is wearing the most green gets to choose their marker. So there you have it folks and then of course there's these that uh, keep track of when you pass 50 and 100 which i think i barely did in our last game so yay for me kodama duo is played over three seasons with each season div being divided into a decree phase a growing phase and a kodama phase in the decree phase you will reveal the first card of the given season spring summer and fall there are three different cards of each of those and you're gonna just play with one of them from each of the three seasons. There are two starting trunks to choose from. You pick one, the other one goes to your mortal enemy. There are four grow phases in a given season with three seasons total, so you'll have a grand total of 12 grow phases. Each one of those phases will have three cards come out face up. There will be a splitter and a chooser. If you're the splitter, the other person's the chooser. If you're the chooser, guess what? The other person is the splitter. The splitter will take these three cards and divide them into two groups. The chooser then picks one of those two groups to play one of those cards that they've picked onto their tree. If you just pick the one with just the one, that can go pretty much anywhere on your tree. You see that you have to connect these to a given branch on your tree. After pricing one branch card down on your turn, you will then score that branch card. You score them by having a continuous line of like items. Here we have the star tree, and I happen to have a star branch here. So since I have at least two icons, one here, one here in that continuous line, I score that many points. So here I would score two points. If I had something like this, for instance, I have some flowers, but I don't have any flowers on my main tree. So I would not score any points in this category. But if I added this one later, now I have a flower, flower, flower. So now I have two cards in line. There are a total of three symbols. I would score three points for that configuration. The more branch cards you get out, let's put this to my original configuration, the more you can score for each one of those features. So here you can see I have clouds and stars and flowers that each have symbols in a contiguous line. So I would be able to score 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 
total points. With this Caterpillar not being able to score, because, again, he's not on the current card that I have, plus it's not contiguous to anything anyway. So I would score all those points. You could score a maximum of 10 points per grow phase. So you can't just make one crazy long um, branch that just scores infinite amounts of points throughout the game. So that is a limiting factor so that they make you add to these cards or to this tree later with, with different avenues. And then you can see there's mushrooms. There's all sorts of different symbols that are very cool. Going back to that initial I split you choose. If you chose the one that has two cards, you will only pick one of those cards to add to your tree. And the other card will go into like a discard pile. Now that discard pile really just means that you get to pick one of the icons that's on here as one of your special icons. These special icons here, for instance, I can choose any one of these three different ones. Once this is discarded, because I picked those two pieces, I pick any one of those symbols that's on that card, and I can now put that on my tree somewhere. And you have to cover up another feature. So for instance, here. Now this has made it into a caterpillar card. So for instance, if I you know, come in later, I now have a continuous line of caterpillars. Be careful though, if your opponent has the double cards and they can choose an icon, if they have an icon with a caterpillar, they can steal it right off of your tree. After completing all those steps, you will exchange these two rolls, and now whoever was the splitter in that round will then become the splitter the next round, and you just keep going back and forth on that. It gives you the balance of obviously, you know, what you're gonna pick um, from round to round. After you have done this four times, so we would have four total uh, branch cards, whether in whatever configuration you ended up doing them in. At the end of that, it is called the Kodama phase. Remember, there were four grow phases in a season. At the end of the season, it is considered the Kodama phase. You are dealt four Kodama cards at the beginning of the game. Remember that three of these Kodama cards is what will have you score. There are quite a number of these different Kodama cards. For instance, we have here two, uh, score two points for each star or cloud card on your tree, whichever is fewer. If you have the star and cloud spirit tokens, you score an additional four points. Here again, we have score three points for each branch card and a caterpillar on your tree. Lose one point for each branch card with a caterpillar in the discard pile. There's all sorts of these guys. Many different ways of scoring. They all have this neat little artwork. It is all completely unique artwork as far as that goes also. They have some that are in different configurations, but they all are slightly different. You can see these are basically the same, but yes, it is different. There is a star there. So it does have all of that genuine, unique artwork. We're only concerned though about the four that we were dealt. At the end of that grow phase, you will pick one of your Kodama cards to play and score for that Kodama phase. So at the end of each season, remembering three of the four cards. Sometimes you wanna keep cards that might score you a ton of points later because you're really building up your tree to score maximum points on there but you do have to play one of them. So you might have to sacrifice knowing that you can score a lot of points on it later because you have to at least score something if you want on this first round. Sometimes with this first round, you only have four cards that will be scoring. So picking one of these cards that you go, well, I don't think I'm just gonna be able to score very many points on that. Maybe get that one out of the way. Just, just take the loss, take the few points that you're gonna get and deal with it. After you have repeated all those steps, three different times you'll have played 16 of these branch cards and three of these Kodama cards and that will become your final score. Remember scoring your points that you did as you lay your branch cards every time and the extra kind of end game bonuses that you'll score points for on the Kodama. Whoever has the most points wins and will be the best Kodama tree builder this side of the Mississippi. Um, okay so our thoughts on the game. I thought it was super cute. Like looking at it and playing with the different branches and stuff is just cute. Everything's very whimsical and I love, I love the yeah, art. So that's word. a positive for me. I did steal it. You <laughs> said it earlier and I was like, I'm going to take that. And I just okay. did. I just right. did. What did you like about it? Uh, you know, I think the main thing I liked about it is the variness of the scoring. Mm. Those cards that we showed you earlier, uh, you can have any number of different amounts of cards. You have the, what the four, four cards yeah. in your hand. You're going to score three of those cards. Yeah. And that that's, that's just 
there's a lot of them in there. So a lot of good so varying many degrees there. of scoring conditions. Yeah, yeah. It, it just can really direct how you're playing the game. Now, the game itself will stay generally the same. Mm -hmm. um, so you might get some sameness out of it because you are basically just making that tree. Yeah. The tree just looks really tree. cool. In fact, it's super satisfying. It when you're laying is. the cards down on the tree, you can branch them off yeah. essentially anywhere you want to go. They're all Unintended. over the place. That was a good one. Um, I also love the split. So like I split, you choose kind of thing. I just I don't love that normally for this game. I really like it. And I don't know if it's because of it. It's a balance thing. It makes it makes you feel like it just works in this game. Right. I you're like trying it. to split them into the point. You know, sometimes you're you're splitting them so like well, there's no way they're gonna take those cards. Yeah. And so you you give them maybe just a single. Because mm -hmm. once you get those two cards, you have more control over which of the icons that you can take from the from the middle those um that replace a different yeah. icon and put those on your tree you know especially if you had to put down a, a branch that didn't line up with like all caterpillars mm. and then you have a broken line you go Darn well now i can grab that caterpillar one and, and place it here and now i have that a high scoring branch right um I, a negative for me and this is purely because i'm a snob hmm. seriously the the board game industry right now what they're producing it's gorgeous. Uh, yeah. It's just That's it's true. beautiful work. So I mean, these cards are meh, meh. They're not that good. <laughs> They're good. Right. Like I want them to be nicer. I wouldn't quite. Nice. I wouldn't quite go that far. <laughs> oh, you wouldn't. They're good. They're quality components. See, that's why I'm probably going to go. That's pretty good. <laughs> They're quality components. Uh, There's no question. It's, it's a good thick card. It Doesn't have the linen finish. Yeah, they are. I'm a snob. I guess I they're it. almost like. I get it stiff though you know so sure. it, which is good they're going to be durable but i'd almost sleeve that sucker right yeah i don't uh, know whatever that's could, my negative about it but, i mean all the little cardboard chits are pretty much the the same thickness that you would normally see in any other game sure um so that's all fine the scoring track is fine it looks okay yeah um you know as far as the overall um uh you know the the like how it looks i guess I, is what i'm saying the overall aesthetics there you and go. There um, it is. so it, it's good overall and the other rule book is concise it's it's good you can mm -hmm. you it's well well written mm -hmm. easy to understand so overall the package is good mm -hmm. i want to say it's like great not nothing over the top but then again it is just a two-player card game right so how much money do you want to spend on a two-player card game exactly you know, there's always and for that. that, when I hear that, it's a two-player card game, it gets me thinking about what I did in the game. And it is it is fun. It's a very satisfying two-player game. It is. It's, I really like it. Yeah, there's there's plenty of interaction because you are constantly looking mm -hmm. at other people's trees. Yeah. You're playing those cards back and forth. You can take, you know, if they have the token that you want, the mm -hmm. wild token, or not the wild token, but the, uh, the, the specific token that you want, you can take that right off their tree and put it on your tree. Yeah, and that you can go can. back and forth too. <clears throat> tiny so, bit of take that, just a tiny bit. Yeah, you don't want to step like on each other's that. toes too much because then they'll just kind of do it right back to you. And yeah. you don't want to just be constantly um, putting that uh, token back and forth. So you're, you're kind of trying to play your mm -hmm. own game, trying to adapt to what other people are doing, kind of identify mm -hmm. what they're trying to you know get with their uh, scoring cards. And you could thwart that somewhat. But you can also, you know, kind of somewhat avoid it so you're not in too much competition mm -hmm. and just uh, went out with points in the end. Yeah. I don't remember if it was a close scoring game. I don't remember. I think you pretty much creamed Probably me. Probably wasn't. I think he creamed <laughs> me, okay? Is that what you guys wanted to hear? No, I think it was pretty close. Was it? Yeah, Gosh, I'd say within like 100 points or so. You know what? Within a hundred... Oh, that was, that's good. That's really good. Yeah. It was fun, though. My, my takeaway is that that's a fun two-player light... Whimsical it's light it's game. pretty quick it's it's definitely like the filler length yep which we don't play a lot of filler length games but this is one i would definitely okay, um, did, add to the rotation yeah absolutely so guys that is kodama duo check it out it is worth a look yeah also i didn't mention at the at the end this is also an expansion to original kodama oh. to make that into a six player game now we haven't done that with the original kodama but if that is something that interests you Gives you a little bit more value added to the game. Yeah, and I didn't know that, so I just learned something. Every day is school. Pretty sure I told you that. At some point. At some point. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we'll see you Bye. on the next one. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise.
Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.